Happy Friday, everybody. It's Invisible Walls 131. This is not Shane. He's somewhere outside Vegas. Um, we sent him out. There's a lot of desert there. <laughs> <laughs> we sent him into the Mojave last week to read all your comments, and he hasn't come back. This is Marcus Beer, and uh, we have a fantastic show for you today. Lots of really cool stuff. There's a lot of great games coming out. So let's push on. And uh, joining me today is Ryan uh, Push It Real Good Stevens. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> That was it. just awesome. And then having seen you uh, j dance today, I mean, you're a triple threat, aren't you? Unfortunately, the dancing's under embargo. Uh, the dancing is <laughs> under embargo. for, and, and that's a good thing, because we need ratings. Good ratings. <laughs> uh, Justin Spears here. Yo. Brooks Huber. What's going on? And the lightning storm of love that is Patrick Morales. G'day. All right, let's crack on. All right, last week was a good week to be a PC gamer because BlizzCon was happening, and Patrick, you were down there. Correct. There were lots of announcements, Cataclysm, Diablo, some StarCraft mini games that are that are coming, uh, like a, a Peggle-type a Peggle game and a, a Bejeweled game. Wow. Mm -hmm. What the hell went on? Uh, you know, it's surprising because... In the past, Blizzard has always supported the the fan community with you know tools to make their own map mods. But I guess this year is a new trend for Blizzard. Uh, th they themselves are going to start making some map mods on their own, including a uh, their take on the widely popular Dota game that has uh, taken the world by storm. Um, when Blizzard make their own map mods, doesn't that isn't that basically an expansion pack? Uh, I wouldn't say so. I, I mean, expansion packs kind of entail like a new single player campaign. Um, new content. Map mods are more just like a little micro repurposing of existing assets to make a, a new kind of a little self-contained game. Have they have they talked about how much they're going to start charging for these? Are they going to be a dollar, fifty cents, two bucks, or whatever? Or are they going to be nine, ten, fifteen bucks? Actually, they're all completely free. So hats off to them for giving fans, you know, all that content. Do you think okay. they'll make StarCraft Ghost in one, <laughs> of, their, in one of their mods? That uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, the, the, they won't comment on that. <laughs> but yeah, BlizzCon uh, was a lot of fun. You know, I'm a big Blizzard fan. Um, although I'd have to say this year compared to previous years probably wasn't as exciting um, as past. Is this because you're older and more curmudgery? Well, not only that, but uh, <laughs> they they yeah. didn't really have much in the way of new announcements. Um, yeah, they, they had new information for Diablo 3. Well, some know. of the announcements were even a little disappointing because yeah. it's like, here's the Demon Hunter. Sweet. It's the last class, and I think people were expecting there to be more than yeah. five. But they said, here's the final class. Actually, when they did announce that the Demon Hunter was the fifth and last class, I was like, mm, that's all? Also, we're letting you into the beta. Well, a thousand <laughs> yeah. of you. Yeah, that was a major buzzkill. Um, <laughs> if people haven't caught wind of this yet, uh, during the closing ceremonies, they announced to the BlizzCon public that they would be doing a Diablo 3 beta, of course, but only to 1,000 randomly picked people. 1,000 so, worldwide. I, I don't know worldwide yeah. or if it's North America, but that was still a pretty huge letdown considering yeah. you know, all the people that showed up. Yeah. Hint, well, it's well, probably not you. Right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. All right, so Patrick, StarCraft Two's out. Cataclysm's nearly here. Let's talk Diablo 3. Yeah, Diablo 3. It's super solid. Um, I mean, if you're a fan of Diablo 2, Lords of Destruction, it feels like you're stepping into a familiar pair of shoes, as it were. <laughs> Um, but you, you got to play as the new Demon Hunter? Yeah, so the Demon Hunter, I guess you could call it like a little amalgam of the Amazon and the Assassin from Diablo 2. Uh, very cool ranged class, you know, lots of cool tricks and gadgets you could use. Um, the gameplay feels very super solid. It feels pretty much in line with, you know, the old school isometric uh, dungeon crawler that, you know... So you, all I mean, you've got to play this game a couple times mm -hmm. now. Would you say the Monk is now still the biggest standout new thing character wise I'd, I'd say in terms of uh just playability me mechanics yeah the yeah. monk kind of uh feels the most different mm -hmm. but they all feel universally uh solid um their new rune system that they announced in the past years uh they've brought back here this time people can try it out basically you can if you played wow you can you know how you could glyph so, uh, your skills to do different things the runes kind of carry out a similar purpose in that they are basically modifiers to your skills it, it really uh lets you kind of play around with the system a little bit you know with the physics that like create these cool little mm -hmm. skills that you can uh, i guess they're just standing for builds it's really neat 
No, that's cool. Did you, did um, you get to jump into the PvP at all? Can you take people's ears? Yeah, that's You the, can that's take people's know. ears. <laughs> you can take people's ears. Uh, the PvP, what they're doing this time is that they're segregating it into its own little kind of battlegrounds. So there's no more PvP where you can, you know, duel someone outside of town. It's in a separate arena where they're actually doing a separate set of uh, balance tweaks so that even though one skill might be overpowered in, you know, the cooperative game, mm -hmm. it might act completely different in the PvP game, which is actually a change. Yeah, that makes, that makes with, sense. Yeah. What are the Imperial security codes for this sector? The security codes. All right, next up, a sequel to a game that uh, really sort of like divided people a couple of years ago. Force, Force Unleashed 2, Ryan, you've been playing it. Yes, um, I conquered that game. Yes. I saw um, that tape. That is tape it, has been destroyed. There's a lot of people who are not happy with this game. <laughs> they, well, there's also a lot of people not happy with our review, but it's, uh, it's a pretty middling experience. You have all these cool powers that don't really amount to much as you go on a straight path towards some really bad cutscenes. So is it as is it more linear than the first? Because the first one was friggin' linear. That's one of no, the problems no, no, I no, have with it. You're crazy. The first one seems like a fucking MMO compared to this game. It's, oh my god, that's because the first one was pretty linear. I mean, yeah, it's, but no, but there was still like a map you could like you know there was more objectives. Here, even the the uh, the combat arenas are a lot of them are in hallways and stuff, and then occasionally you'll get into a more open area, but then it'll be blocked out, and then. I think in one point you're in an engine room and flames kind of come out of the floor, and that's like was probably one of the highlights of something actually standing out. Hang on, what's that scene this in no uh, Attack of the floor. Clones or something? <laughs> probably. I mean, there's not that many locations. Um, the first game had a lot of uh, variety of enemies, but even if the first game did not exist, this game in a vacuum is just kind of like a little kind of a subpar experience. You have some cool abilities. You have a couple of opponents to use them against, but it's kind of hard to keep motivated through the story through the actual mechanics because there's not really much going on. They just throw a bunch of stormtroopers at you and occasionally these droids with these repetitive quick time finishing events that play out for too, far too long and you see them far too often. Yeah, it's fun, you know, mind controlling people and making them fight for you. It's fun pushing people away, but that, that starts to wear thin when that's all you're doing so let's talk and about it's being parceled out in such little bits at a time. Let's talk about the powers. Uh, you know, what are, what are the Jedi powers? Do they have force push in there? Yeah, I mean, it's the same. The, what's added is, um, yeah, you can throw your lightsabers, you can repel people, you can throw them around like the ragdolls. Um, they added the Jedi mind tricks, and now you can uh, push both analog sticks in to go like super crazy Jedi rage Hulk mode, which I didn't really do too often. You can but fuse with other Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can crash jack other Jedi. Because when you look at the around. Jedi, you think you know, yeah, the Jedi are going to go absolutely you know batshit crazy in Berserker mode. Well, I mean, the more interesting thing in the game was if can you clone Jedi or not, but that kind of takes, uh, it's not really, it's, it's brought up from time to time, but the, the main character, Starkiller, he's just like, gotta find my girlfriend! She's so hot! Don't care about the rebellion! Wow, does the, do the veins pop in, pop in his head just like they are with you right now? Totally. <laughs> yes. Wow. And then you rescue the General Kodo, who I remember not being such a douchebag in the first game. And now he's just like barking. He's basically your like controller. If, you know, he's always in your earpiece being like, go kill more stormtroopers. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm so, blind. What a dick. Well, I, got, I, look, yeah. I, got, I got to admit, I haven't played He's this yet me. because I was playing Fable 3 play all day hey, yesterday. Play the demo. A lot of people are big Star Wars fans. You're gonna, you're still going to have an okay time with this game. It's not broken. It's less buggy than well, the first game. At least that's but, one thing, I suppose. You know, it's, it's not the longest game. It's probably like six or seven hours. And there's some challenge modes that actually kind of highlight how bad some of the game design actually is because like I did the platforming challenge mode and there's not even any height to anything it's literally just jumping from small rotating island to small rotating island um, well, at least they rotate right? so yeah so that, that's about it Ooh. what were LucasArts thinking I mean they, they've gone as I, PR offensive over the last 12 months well where the first game I bet they were thinking that the first game sold really well and was you know for some people it was probably too complex like you know place thermal detonators at four points on a map what I just want to kill fucking stormtroopers. The problem here is they don't have the, the, the outline of like a movie where they can go scene to scene and copy something. Here it's they, they just have these set pieces and they try to like stretch them out as much as possible and then you're just repeating the same. Like uh, I, Johnny played a bit of it and I'm, you know, it's it's kind of cool. There's a part where there's like these giant balls that you can pick up and use like like uh, bowling balls to knock people down. But by the fifth time you do this, it's it's not really that special anymore. 
And then the bosses mm. are the same thing. They all mm. kind of have a little bit of a puzzle element, but you have to redo the same, like the exact same thing, multiple times. And I won't even talk about the last Sounds battle. Sounds like it's Castlevania. Ridiculously horrible. Sorry, Castlevania. <laughs> all right, so there you Castlevania's go. Castlevania's probably a little bit better. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I just meant the the boss things. No, I just I feel like for this game, they're like, I mean, the first game sold so well, it has Star Wars attached to it. There's a minimum bar that you have to hit in quality they, to get well, millions and millions of sales. You have to step up from the last sales. one. You have to fix all the bugs. No, you the, have to make it oh, less they, linear. No, people no, bought, people they bought it. it. They won. They, they won already. It. They made it. I think they tried to make it more accessible because you still have all these cool More like Lego Star Wars. Stuff, but with, but yeah. there's a leveling system. I love system. Lego Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about Lego Star Wars because that was That's fun. a better game. But there's a leveling system that you can almost ignore. Because you're so powerful from the get-go. I'm not saying you won't die and, you know, it, like there will be some parts where you, you fall down a pit or something like that. But with the generous save system and everything, you can just soldier through this. I've spent the last sort of like 12, 18 months following all the stuff that, um, was it Hayden Blackman and his team have been saying about this game? Or we but went, he just jumped ship. He just started his own studio. Well, I don't give a shit because he was still commenting about this game and talking about it. And he was the exact producer on it. And he was saying, we've learned all the lessons from the first one. It's going to be better. It's going to be longer. You're going to have more choices. It's going to be less buggy well apparently the only thing they've delivered is that it's less buggy and now i mean you're pretty much convincing me to go and return the collector's edition that i dropped 70 80 bucks on uh with amazon yesterday i might just return it to them uh because i don't i don't want to open this fucking thing if just you want to get the, keep the extra stuff sell the sell the actual box on yeah you know sell the game on ebay yeah but <laughs> it's, not, your, it's, like, it's <laughs> not it's not worth 20 bucks for a star killer <laughs> two gig usb card what treachery is this Another trick of the gods. No, my son. It is me. Alrighty, next up, we are, I mean, this is kind of shocking to me, but who knew there were PSP games coming out? Right. Uh, and we've got to talk about one. Brooks, you've been playing God of War Ghosts of Sparta. Uh, how is it? I haven't only been playing it, I reviewed it, and I absolutely loved well, it. Well, don't you have to play it to review it? Yeah. You make Not it sound around like here. <laughs> <just have interns. laughs> we have interns do all the capture. We pretty much just make yeah. shit up. I just get whipped. Write a script. <laughs> Finish it. Uh, uh, I had a really good time with it. Uh, Ready at Dawn did an out outstanding job like with their uh, first one, Chains of Olympus. Uh, production values through the roof. Graphically, everything. Just the whole game really impressed me. Does it plug in? Does it plug into God of War Three? Is that a continuation of the story or a side story or? Uh, where it fits in the whole God of War spectrum, the story wise, it, it fits in right after God of War One. As soon as you take the throne and you're the new God of War, and before 2 has a chance to begin, because Chains of Olympus is a prequel to everything, he starts having these visions of his long-lost brother, Deimos. And he blames himself for the loss because his little Spartan buddies, little Spartan boys, Deimos was taken away from the family at a young age because it was a uh, prophecy that the one that was marked, the marked warrior, the You're breaking boy. my heart, Brooks. This, <laughs> this, this, is, this is emotional. It is. It, and, and so he was torn away from him, and Kratos is like, I got to get him back at any cost. So that's that's what sets is up the story. Is he the final boss? Wait, spoilers. I don't, I'm just guessing. I don't know. You, you are reunited <laughs> with your long-lost brother, and then uh, Brother Love goes down, and then they tag team something together. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's so let's just leave well, it at that. There you go. I mean, seriously. So you, I'm, you, I'm you kind of afraid to ask what the sex mini game is this time <laughs> around. At the then. brothel? Well, well, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Brother love and tag teaming. Can't you yeah. draw your own conclusions? That's There's why I'm a little afraid. Day, you know, Very close knit family. You guys <laughs> just have sick minds. Hey, vice is nice, but incest is best. <laughs> All right, so t tell us more. Okay. Is this a total slaughter fest? I mean, you, you yeah. kill lots uh, you of things. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's very light on puzzles. I actually came across very few puzzles. I didn't really realize that towards until like towards the end, because you know, God of War three had that huge mind bending fuck puzzle. I couldn't get around that whole garden thing. This oh, one that, is just yes. a, yeah. Remember that oh. the, cube to, like, was, the cube was cool too, but the, yeah, the, the, the garden 3D, and the it was like garden. echochrome. Oh gosh, that was that crazy. Was funny. I never got stumped in, in Ghost of Sparta. It was just a complete combat fest the whole way through, and and I and I absolutely loved it. And they didn't introduce any new magic that is even worth mentioning. Uh, the the alternate weapon is a Spartan shield and spear. Even even that didn't impress me too much. It's just the blades. All the way through. Did you have to swim at any point in the game? Well, it takes place partly in Atlantis, so you are swimming okay. through these uh, tunnels. In, in Chains of Olympus, there's literally like a 90-second segment you you do swimming, and I felt like they just were like, oh, we have to have a swimming section because yeah. you don't – like it was the only time. So I was just curious if they felt like they had to hit all the God of War notes. Oh, no, they just look so sexy when he's wet. Yes, those <laughs> bulging just biceps. comes off the skin. There is another aerial um, portion of the game that I thought was really cool where you have to dive down after some – winged beast and perform combat in the air and avoid these uh gust winds that was that was actually pretty neat so so the variety is there and you and you tackle a whole bunch of different environments you go through a volcano atlantis hell 
is the ca- camera spot on? Because that's what I mean. That's the thing with these games where you don't have the, especially on the PSP, where there, there's yeah. not even the option with the second analog stick. No, it's, Sometimes it's, they try to cushion it into the shoulder buttons or something. But no, it's perfect. They yeah. they have it placed intelligently. And they even borrowed the some of the uh, camera elements from three, where you get that zoomed in closeness, where he goes through those narrow crackways, just cool. for dramatic effect. But yeah, camera yeah. was never an issue. Boss battles were outstanding. The first one. When you think it's over, it continually comes back to haunt you throughout the first like three hours of the game, which I, I, I really felt fascinating. Okie dokie, Rock Band 3. Patrick, you've been playing Rock Band Three. Um, yes. This is the, the. I think this is the the final one. Have they announced this is the final one? Or I, I miss, uh, it's not like a trilogy. I, is I don't. It? I don't know no, if it's, it's the final one. Trilogy, <laughs> it's but the think, latest one. You know, they, they, I think they've said that they. You know, they can't really go much further with the amount of stuff they're adding, and it's just a case of music uh, from here on in. Or maybe I'm just again yeah. making it, shit up because I've had too much Coke Zero. <laughs> I think. Uh, Remember to say zero this time. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 last Guitar Hero game that came out, I think, is the last for that studio. Well, um, it's just. That because well, that sold yeah. that sold eighty thousand units week one, and yeah. that franchise is just dead. Yeah, Rockman on the other hand, uh, this is just the latest in the series, and uh, kudos to them for not releasing as much games as fucking Guitar Hero. Yeah. Well, we did have the glory of Green Day. Yeah, I mean, but it had what Green Day, Beatles. Mm-hmm. That's it, you know. And then just the Metallica? core rock band games. That was Guitar, that was Guitar Hero. Hero. Oh. And it's not often you hear Green Thank Day you. and Beatles in the same sentence, right? Um, but yeah, Rock Band Three. You know. The way I look at it, every time a new music game comes out, the I find it harder and harder and harder to find reasons to pick up the newest one, just because usually they have you know small incremental upgrades. But Rock Band Three really steps it up. Um, it improves upon you know Rock Band's fundamental gameplay in so many ways, all while adding these new ways to kind of interface with the game. Like the biggest feature is the pro mode, where it introduces these crazy new instruments that are pretty close to the real thing. Cowbell? Uh, no cowbell just yet. Ah, fail. But Triangle. You, but you do have keyboards, and you do have a, a new guitar peripheral. Do they have oh rock band Liberace? That'll be next. Not quite yet, but uh, I'm sure you could uh, play some Elton John tunes here and there. That's not right. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, uh, so so yeah, they bring all right. So they bring the piano. It's another keyboard. Yeah, it's, it's another peripheral you have to buy. Mm-hmm. Is it worth it? You know what? I, the the good thing about Rock Band Three is that it's you completely opt into the pro mode stuff. Um, if it's you kind of hard, right? It's kind of a. You know what? It is hard, but after spending a little bit more time with the keyboards and and uh, not the guitar, we didn't have that for too long. But after spending a little bit more time with the keyboards and just you know committing yourself to a song, it actually becomes pretty cool just trying to learn a song uh, by itself. Um, and it, it, it does take a little bit of getting used to, and the trainers in the game won't necessarily get you up to the level of proficiency of, say, playing for real or, you know, being a concert pianist, what have you. But it, it definitely gives you enough to play the songs that are cool and familiar to you uh, and the ones that are in the game. So I've bought the first two rock bands. I've bought Beatles rock band, Green Day rock band. I'm a, I'm a rock band junkie, say, hypothetically, because mm-hmm. I'm not. Um, and I buy Rock Band 3 for the pro mode. All my back catalog of music, does that... Is that work in pro mode? Uh, you know, have, have they got select you know select titles that they're pushing and upgrading? Um, so right now, they've built a back end where the pro mode drums will carry over into every single song in the Rock Band uh, catalog. But right now, they have not extended that support to pro keyboard and uh, guitar. So you might have to wait a little bit longer for DLC for that. But Rock Band 3 is a super solid installment. I'd say it's probably the best music game you could get right now. Good song selection, too. Yeah, a great song selection. I mean, harmonics... So it's like, really, what, 80 tracks or something? It's uh, 83. Yeah. And they're all unlocked from the beginning, so you don't need to, you know, Thank fiddle God. around with codes or, you know, yeah. unlocking shit. So who's on it? Uh, give us some Give us some uh, name drop. Uh, I mean, if I had to drop the biggest names, you have people like Queen, finally, in a Rock Band game. You have The Cure. You have, you know, Hugh Lewis in the news, which, you know, falls nicely with the... Still no Hoobastank. <laughs> it, it, they it, do have him. Though. No, not yet. But, uh, yeah, Huey Lewis, you know, great with the 25th anniversary of Back to the Future. 
<laughs> um, yeah, you've got a lot of people in there. It's it's a it's a good song selection. Harmonix really knows their stuff. So people have been saving up, you know, resisting the first couple of rock bands or guitar heroes that are coming late to the party and they want to buy the entire kit out the door. This this is a good investment and then they can pick and choose what to download later. Oh yeah, and just in general, rock band I believe has always had the stronger song selection than guitar hero plus the deal their, their dlc library is crazy it's like 2000 songs right now so if, you, if you're holding off for for a while on a music game i'd say rock band 3 is worth you know jumping into again the keyboards just had a great new dynamic to the fundamental gameplay and it's a ton of fun All right, as uh, everybody knows, I'm a huge fan of shooters on the PS3. I think the PS3 is the best console for shoot 'em ups. Apparently, are you for uh, real? Uh, no, I'm taking the piss totally. I, I've oh, never okay. played. I did, a, I was like, I've I never really played a shooter on the PS3 that I've actually enjoyed. So there you go. Yeah, I think I'm, we actually had video proof of that when this game had its old beta. Yes, um, <laughs> actually, yes, yeah. I, I was not. I was not very good at it. I mean, I just don't get the feel for it. But Killzone Three is now in beta, and you know, you guys have been playing it, and have you been having much fun with it? I think so. Yeah, it's it seems pretty good. Good, good segment. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and with that, we're done. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, no, but but really though, I I think I think if you were to pick it up, I think the overall feel of Killzone 3 is just a little bit, you know, a little bit better. It still has its own unique kind of, you know, maybe characters feel heavy and, you know, you have to get used to aiming. I don't, it sounds almost like I'm making excuses and it didn't, don't it didn't no, work no, too well in the there's past. There's no need but to make excuses for my shortcomings They have, they have some really player. cool shit. They have a, the classes are really good. They, they ripped off a little bit of Team Fortress with the Infiltrator and the... Some other dudes. So but but no one's like defenseless. Like the medic can no, still everyone's kill yeah, the motherfuckers. Medic, and yeah, they actually, if you if you level up the medic, you can get a little medibot that will fucking yeah, gun yeah, people yeah. down and then resurrect movie. you after you go down, which is pretty pretty appealing. We're still saving up for that though because you know you gotta just gotta wanted bank. his. I'm precious spending all my unlock rifle. points on uh, yeah sniper rifles. So. So how does the game look? So the last time, I, obviously, the, when I played the Kills on Two Beta, I mean, one of the things I noticed is that it, it was just you know shades of gray, 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 more gray, just really dank and depressing. And is there any variety, any spice to it? I mean, I've I've got really, I don't think I'll be playing this game, but there are people who want to know. Did you did you play Kills on Two or? No, I play like I play my shooters. That might have been on, why you didn't notice, you know. Well, I only I played possibly. the beta. I mean, seriously, I, I actually you know I I play my my shooters on PC, you know, and and that's always the way it is. My, well, my I, guess, mouse and I keyboard think there's, there's one map. It's a frozen dam. It shows off kind of environmental effects. There's a lot of snow swirling around, and they have their their water looks pretty good. You know, they've they've shown it off a few times, and it's it's right there in the map. There, there's one level of that like giant Stargate. Thing. Yeah, this uh, one with yeah. a huge it's a effect. turbine and it'll yeah, yeah fry your electronics. I think it'll kill you if you're right in the middle of it. Ra- rather but, uh, than a gray and brown, you're treated to a one pellet per stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that one is green, green yeah. and then um, the highway stage is like orange. And yeah. the game's alpha right now, and I think you know the frame rate definitely, definitely, definitely it's dips. An alpha beta. Yeah. yeah, it's an alpha beta. Can you say that in British? Well, alpha beta. Oh, nice. <laughs> there um, you go. It's oddly like there, I I'm, I can't really put my finger on it. Maybe it is just the classes and the and stuff because it feels it, already in this stage. It feels like there's a lot more like meat to it than Killzone 2's. I mean, Killzone 2 had a pretty solid multiplayer, but here we I mean we get into a lot of like there's some betas we're in right now that we can't talk about, but a lot of times they feel rough and you don't really want to like stumble through them. This is actually pretty compelling once you get over the kind of the small hurdle of like. You know, tuning your sensitivity and going okay, through yeah. the alternative control yeah. setup. Yeah, you're, you're first, you you want to like crank it up, and then you find yourself just like way overcorrecting. And then yeah. the old controls. There's still some weird little things. I kept getting stuck on some um, little, just like a little pile of dirt. Like I wouldn't be able to run over. Yeah, it sometimes stuff you do like that. that, or you'll jump and you'll just barely not clear it because you weren't standing at the right angle. And then you'll yes, yeah, so there's a little. But the classes play around. play really well with each other. The stages have some interesting dynamics. Like um, Frozen Dam actually opens up depending uh, if you're just doing deathmatch. It's yeah, really depending small, on the mode. but it will yeah. actually like open up if you're doing some of the objective-based multiplayer or um, 
the the cra- the thing that I loved from Killzone Two was uh, where it will switch from you know like capture the flag to search and destroy to deathmatch within the match without having to reload. For it makes for longer games, uh, which is generally good, and you'll get rewarded. You'll get more of your little XP bonuses and stuff like that, so you can level up and unlock stuff. Hey okay. Justin, uh, yeah. could could you explain the the whole cutscene thing and the multi part <laughs> kind of multi? Oh yeah, so there's a mode called Operations, and there's only one map, and it's on Frozen Dam, which is actually also the only map you can do Guerrilla Warfare on. So that's like kind of the most, probably their most, you know, fleshed out or final or, or, or balanced map. But uh, each each team has an objective. One team has to attack and the other team has to defend. And depending on the results, you'll see little cutscenes. Depending on your performance, your character could be featured in the cutscenes. So, you know, if you're the, could you the, be the a MVP, negatively featured? then at the end you'll be like bashing the prisoner's <laughs> face in, you know, and you're like, your teammates are high-fiving you. The guy who didn't do so well is in the background going, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I helped, <laughs> but he didn't you really. see Dick Cheney both the uh, people. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's that kind of asymmetrical objective-based thing we've seen in, you know, a lot of games, like, uh, like you know, enemy territory games or, you know, whatever. It, it seems cool. They only have the one now, but I mean, yeah, like Ryan said, Warzone's probably the coolest because you're constantly switching objectives. You know, you just uh, got through defending your target from, you know... Mm-hmm. Keeping the other team from planting explosives, and then you're selected as a VIP, and then you, you know, you kind of set the up there. <laughs> dudes drop some turrets, you know, rally around you, and then after that, you have another objective. You have to go on the offensive. So you know, it keeps you moving around the map. It's uh, yeah, it's good, and the class, the classes are just really cool. We we do because you can, I mean, you can unlock like spawn points. You know, if you're the, one of the classes, a tactician, so you can actually unlock places where people can spawn in, like closer to their objectives and stuff. Yeah. So there's definitely a lot of teamwork. The medic can resurrect people. So you and know, gen- generally have the markers on the map. Like if you're a medic, you will see people who are down. You can go get them. If so you're you trying to capture to an object and return it, you'll be able to see it. You know, even if you don't have it. So yeah, I mean, it, and there there are definitely a lot of people there who are you know probably huge Killzone fans, and they're super well adapted to the the PlayStation Three controller. It, for it, it definitely FPSs. still feels like Killzone. There's that kind of like stop on a dime. Iner- like zero inertia for when like you're aiming. So you know if you're trying to if you're like got a beat on someone with a sniper rifle. You know, and you try to readjust, it can be a little weird with the acceleration when you're, especially when you're scoped in. And the guns can eat up a lot of the screen real estate as well. <laughs> yeah, they do. Like they have you nice can, reload animations. Yeah, it's beautiful. So yeah, it's a, it's, it's a fun time. Will you marry me? But we must have a ring to do this properly, right? For it to be official. All right, finally this week, Fable 3. Now, Shane was supposed to be talking about this, but he uh, obviously got pulled away to go and do something else. So it's fallen on me, which uh, is not a hardship because uh, I'm sure a lot of regular people know that uh, I was a big fan of Fable 2. So I got the game yesterday, uh, which is Tuesday, and um, I've put about 14 hours into it so far. And i got to say, first and foremost, the game is gorgeous. I mean, you know, it's certainly one of the best-looking uh, games I've seen on the 360, because uh, that's the version I'm playing. And, you know, the, the engine really looks beautiful. The buildings are phenomenal. The character artwork is great. You do take a bit of a frame rate hit every now and again. There's a lot of the same problems that were in the, you know, the last two Fable games. Too many characters on the screen. You go into what I like to call bionic mode, which is almost like slow-mo. And then you get a lot of pop-ins when you go into, into new areas, uh, especially out in the wilds. You'll get the mountains popping in, you know, and taking a couple of seconds to do that. But on the whole, the game is, you know, it's certainly the most beautiful Fable game, one of the best-looking games I've seen on the 360. Premise is, is actually very straightforward. Uh, you know, you're the kid actually of your previous character if you played say, Fable 2 of the uh, of the uh, of the hero. So uh, your big brother's a bit of a dick. He rules the country now, and you have to lead a rebellion against him, or lead a rebellion, and then um, you know decide if you want to be a good prince or uh, or princess or a bad prince or princess now peter molyneux to me and you know feel free to chip in with any questions guys if you got any questions about this game 14 hours yes 14 hours did you eat a lot of snacks actually no i mean and this this is the this is the first thing i noticed this game i haven't died once in this game i haven't been knocked out once i haven't died once which is really bizarre for i mean in real life in. Uh, yes, I ate. Okay. I, thank you. Thank you for my well-being. But yes, I <laughs> ate. I went to the bathroom. Uh, I literally, I, I went to the bathroom, not just on the couch. <laughs> no time um, for a shower, though. Uh, I showered. I did have a shower this morning, so I, I am, you know, relatively stink-free. But it's interesting. This, you know, the, the snacks thing. You, 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 uh, you know, you have to eat. You know, you eat a lot in Fable Two, and it would make you fatter, make you thinner, and that stuff is Did in there right now. They get rid of that bullshit because that's kind it, of annoying. It's, it's in there, but not as much. I mean, it's very like, much oh, no, toned I got down. Fat. I have to eat seventeen celery. Yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> 
mean, it, it's still in there for you for you to mess around with, but it's not as overt. It's more, it's more hidden away. But one of the things I found is that the game is ridiculously easy. I'm 14 hours yeah, in. Yeah, no, like I I Shane, Shane said that. You he's, can't make it harder either, right? There's no. Uh, no, there's no, there, and there's definitely a, a lack or... of a lack of options with regards to you know having multiple games running at once. Um, they've done away with a, sort of like the life bar. The only time you get to realize if you're dying or not is when um, your little you know D-pad on the bottom left hand side of the screen starts to flash. So you really don't know how many you know how many life uh, life points you have to spend in the first place. Is it flashing? So you can quick heal. Uh, yeah, because it'll basically tell you. You know, you can act, uh, either eat a piece of food or or use a health pack. But there were varieties of health packs in the last game. Varieties of potions to bump yeah, up but your spells, and all even, those are gone. That didn't even matter in the last game either. You'd lose your like experience or bonus. Yeah, thing, but, uh, and then you just respawn you'd, you'd right where you were. Get scars, but I mean, at least there was enough of a challenge where you could go through the game and you you know you'd you get knocked out four, five, six, seven, eight times. Now. I mean, like I said, it hasn't happened to me once, and I've been through some, you know, some pretty, you know, tasty looking looking battles. And you know, once you once you've got your powers, if you got the, you know, for example, the magical powers, which you can dual wield now, you've got the same spells from the last one, mm -hmm. but um, you have them on gauntlets, so you can actually, uh, you know, use the fire one and the vortex one, or the or the force push. And but once you get those up to say level, you know, three stars, four stars. And you drop those powers straight away. You're pushing the bad guys straight out of the way. They're getting destroyed. Nobody can get get near you. And it's always been the case with these Peter Molyneux games that you know they just don't like you dying for something. They, they, well, need, um, they need force resistant enemies. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in place of a, a like I say a hard difficulty setting, do you feel that there are any aspects of the game where you can kind of impose a difficulty on yourself? Because I know the review stated that you know once you become king. You can choose to either, you know, rule with a gentle hand and you know, at, at the cost of, you know, having a lower overall kind of like a wealth in the kingdom. You can you can play I mean you could play as a bastard from the get go. I mean from the literally from the first choice um, they give you where you have to give a pep talk to the um, to the staff of you know to the kitchen staff of your castle. You can either um, you know be nice to them or you can uh, give them a, you know a bit of a dressing down. And you get that option you know all the way through and you know playing as the bad guy does make it a lot harder because mm -hmm. people are more resistant it takes longer to get gold um but it's it just seems i mean this seems like a way more linear fable game than fable 2 was which goes against everything again molin you've been saying it feels like you know they've they've switched out the way you, you uh level up now by instead of uh, you know using lots of, um you know getting specific orbs for your powers whether it be shooting uh melee or, or or the magic and then using those to upgrade your powers you get guild seals and you get guild seals for you know doing nice things for people completing little quests uh, and then you get to spend them on this thing called the Road to Rule, which is basically a bunch of tw uh, quests. So, for example, the the uh, lightning spell will be forty, uh, or, you know, forty guild seals. Or you know, even if you want to unlock the entrepreneur pack, if you want to buy the shops, that will cost you twenty seals. Whereas before, you could go in if you had enough money, you could buy stuff. And I think that they, they, they've tinkered. You know, they, they've looked at Fable Two and it's like, okay, what could we have done better? And they've messed with some of the stuff that they really didn't need to fuck with. Uh, for example, another way of making money in the you know in, in Fable Two was you know you could be a black blacksmith or you could um, the mini games you know, yeah the mini games mm -hmm. yeah and they've turned those mini games from uh, being something that was relatively straightforward and easy to get into and get high multiplayer uh, multipliers where you'd have the little um, you know uh, little dot going across the screen you yeah, just yeah. Hit, hit the sweet spot now it's basically a, a rock band knockoff where you've got you know hit the blue hit the blue button hit the green button hit the yellow uh, button that's still kind of similar I mean they all, they all have their own little mechanics but I mean they were all tedious as fuck yeah, I mean, but they but were also rewarding because you had all the fucking high multipliers and you didn't want to stop I think I like served beer I mean, for like 45 minutes <laughs> and I was like why were, am were, I doing this they were tedious but you get the great multipliers but yeah now I mean they've got loot hero in there pie making um, and they are actually even more tedious because you can't even get a huge amount of multiplayers, uh, multipliers going. I mean, uh, I think I've I've got to about eleven on the multipliers before literally the thing dances up the screen so fast you you're still pressing the first two or three buttons. Let me see what else have they messed around with that really pissed me off. All right, this is a this is an issue I had with Fable Two, and they have it in Fable Three. There's no multiple quest tracking. If you're doing an RPG. Why the fuck don't you put in multiple quest tracking? And that's basically if I'm going down to Bowerstone Industrial for one quest, I want to be able to complete three or four different quests down there at the same time as opposed to popping back and forth to different areas. And this is something that, you know, 
the, the only way you can do it, you go in, you complete one quest, then you have to return to your sanctuary, go back to the marker, hit the quest tab, and then pull up the next uh, the next quest that's in that area. And that is just a fucking waste of time, especially when you've got so many FedEx quests. If you want to build relationships with anybody in the game, you have to you know you have to do the, the little expressions. You dance with them, you play patty cake, then they'll give you a quest, which is a FedEx quest, either deliver or or go and dig something up and bring it back to me. So if you oh. want to build your reputation and get more guild seals, which you need to do to open up all the chests and get all the powers across the board you have to do literally dozens and dozens of these poxy ass fedex quests which seems like if now. you're the king you could have someone do that for you right? yeah but you're not yeah, that's the thing you know you deliver just, this package yeah you, you they don't give you that option because you're the <laughs> you're the prince who's helping the revolution against your brother so you, you know it's all underground you all have to do it yourself so yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm I'm disappointed, and it's it's actually sucks for me because I mean I, there's three I'm three for three disappointed now. On the I'm in disappointed in a Peter Molyneux game. I'm disappointed. Hmm. I'm, Can you, you plant know, an acorn and watch it grow into a mighty oak? No, you can't. Oh, I mean, there is no still. fucking acorn. Seriously. <laughs> but I bet you can fart. Have yes, you bought the you, fart uh, expression yet? I haven't bought the fart expression. <laughs> you can be a bully. You can call somebody right, a chicken. Yeah. I mean, they do have some stuff that's in there that's, that, that's really quite fun. There is a, um, a a mission that involves dropping into a D and D game. So you're in a game with. I heard about game, that. And it's kind of funny listening to the nerds talking about you know, oh, let's have the girl of Keth and let's do this and that. Um, and then there's another random one where you have to act out a play. Have you had sex with anyone? Uh, I haven't had sex with anybody yet, but they do have a little sex tracker and uh, you mean know, in the how game. many STs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I haven't had no, no sex in the game, no sex out of the game, I'm afraid. Um, voice acting is actually pretty good. They've got John Cleese, anybody who loves Monty Python. Stephen Fry He's is a back good as. Guy. Yeah, Stephen Fry is back as Reva. Um, they have uh, Zoe Wanamaker as the you know the mysterious narrator. And then, the, bizarrely enough, for all you Brits, Jonathan Ross is in the game, who's a English Get chat out. show. Yeah, Jonathan Ross is Reva. Get out. So if you know who Jonathan and Ross is. No, I, mean, I don't. <laughs> all right, shut up. So uh, he's a British chat show host, actually. So, you know, the voice acting is really good. But overall, it just feels, as I said, they, they've tried to improve the game, but done it in areas that didn't need the, the work. And it seems to have lost a little bit of the soul. The first game, uh, the second game was a really, you know, it was quite funny, quite lighthearted, you know, a lot of fun to play. You're in control of your character and you felt like you're in control. So Fable just, 3 is a better looking Fable 2 that hasn't really pushed anything too much it's, it's even though more, it's a little it's more, more I, serious I would it's more serious it's a different tone it's Is it seems more serious it doesn't say it doesn't seem as much uh you know i haven't had as much fun with fable 3 as i had with fable 2 so i wouldn't even say it's a better looking fable 2 i would say it's a better looking alternate reality fable 2 oh fierce warrior are you here to join my army good we shall face all our enemies together won't we yes we will yes we will all right, so, that's the wrap on 131. We will ba be back next week with uh, 132, I believe, Ryan. Is that correct? Yes, I believe that's how numbers work. Fantastic. And we will be covering games and stuff that you like, and Shane will be back from his adventures in the desert. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks to the crew. Hope you enjoyed. We will see you next week.